Welcome back to the solutions manual. In this video, we will solve the problem 9-60 from R.C. Hibeler Engineering Statics 12th edition. According to this problem, we have to locate the centroid x bar y bar of the composite area. Now to solve this problem, first of all we have to divide this composite area into some simple geometries. For example, I can divide this composite area into four simple geometries. For example, this is the square, first geometry. This is the right angle triangle, second geometry. Uh, this is the semicircle, third geometry. And this is the circle, fourth geometry. These geometries are shown separately in these two figures. This is the first, second, and third geometries. And that's the fourth geometry. Now to proceed further, let's write the formulas. So x bar is equals to sum of the product of centroid of simple geometries into their areas divided by the total area. Similarly, the y bar is equals to sum of product of y component y coordinate of centroid of simple geometries into their area divided by the total area. Now keep it remembered that x curly and y curly will be measured from origin. Let's draw a table now. The table will contain six columns. We have the figure number. This is the x coordinate of centroid of simple geometry. That's the y coordinate of centroid of simple geometry. This is for their areas. And this is, these two columns are for the products. All right. Now our first geometry is a square. So for a square, The x curly is equals to half of base. So x curly is equals to 1 upon 2 times of base. And the base is for 3 fit. So x curly becomes 1.5 fit. And now for the y curly. The y curly is also 1 upon 2 times of the height. And since it's a square, so height is also same as the base. So y curly is 1 upon 2 times of 3 fit. So it is also 1.5 fit. Now the area, the area of a square is the side square. So it's 3 square equals to 9. So the area is 9. And these two columns becomes 13.5 and 13.5. Now for the second geometry. The second geometry is a right angle triangle. So for triangle. Now for triangle we have two ends. One is the thicker end. Other is the thinner end. These two are the. These two are the thinner ends 
and this is the thicker end. So x curly is equals to 1 upon 3 of base from thicker end. So x curly is equal to 1 over 3 times d fit because from the thicker end the base of this triangle is 3 fit. So x curly becomes 1 fit. But remember that x curly and y curly will be measured from the origin. So in terms, the x curly is basically this one fit and these three fits. So in total, the x curly for figure two is four fit. Now for the y curly, y curly is also equals to 1 over 3 times of height from thicker end. So y curly is equals to 1 over 3 times the height is also the 3 fit. So 3, so it becomes 1 fit. So y curly is 1 fit. Now for the area, the area of a triangle is equals to 1 over 2 times of base into height. Since base and height are the same, 1 over 2 times 3 times 3, it becomes 4.5 feet squared. So 4.5 feet square. And these two columns becomes 18 and 4.5. Now for the third geometry. The third geometry is a semicircle. So x curly for semicircle. The x curl is equals to 4r over 3 pi. And r for semicircle is 1.5 fit. So 4 into 1.5 divided by 3 pi becomes 2 upon pi. Now for y curly, you can see that from the image that y curly would be at the distance equal to radius from the origin. So somewhere here. y curly would be somewhere here, the distance equals to the radius. So y curly is also equals to 1.5 fit. So it's 2 upon pi and 1.5 and now for the area, the area of the semicircle is half of the area of circle. So half of pi r squared. So half pi 1.5 the whole square, it becomes 9 upon 8 pi. And these two columns becomes 
2.25 and 27 upon 16 pi. But note one thing that this x curly for semicircle should be negative because it would be located somewhere here. And this is the origin and it's on the left of the origin. So x curly has to be negative. So it's negative 2 upon pi. Similarly, it's negative 2.25. And then we have the figure 4. The figure 4 is a circle. And we know that for circle, the centroid is going to be on its center. So x curly is equals to, for the circle, this figure, the x curly is going to be on the center, means at the origin. So x curly is 0. The y curly, on the other hand, is equals to 1.5 fit because we are measuring the distance from the origin. So y curly is 1.5 fit. An area for circle is pi r square and radius for the circle is 1 fit, so it becomes just pi. So 0, 1.5, pi, 0, and it becomes 1.5, pi. But notice one thing, that in original figure, we have a hole that is resembling a circle. So basically, the circle is not the part of the geometry. So the area of the circle has to be subtracted. So it has to be a negative pi and negative 1.5 pi. So this is it for the table. Now we have to move towards finding the x bar and y bar. x bar is equals to summation of this column. So 13.5 plus 18 minus 2.25 plus 0 divided by the total area. So we have to sum this column. So what it becomes? It becomes 9 plus 4.5 plus 9 upon 8 pi minus pi. So from here, the x bar becomes 2.11 fit. This is our first answer. And now for the uh, y bar, it's equals to the summation of this column. So 13.5 plus 4.5 plus 27 upon 16 pi minus 1.5 pi divided by the summation of this column. So 9 plus 4.5 plus 9 upon 8 pi minus pi. So from here the y bar becomes 1.34 fit. So this is our second answer. I hope you will find this video helpful. If you do, please make sure to subscribe to this channel and also turn on the bell icon for the daily updates. And if you have any questions or any doubts about this problem, then you can ask it in the comment section and I will answer it as soon as possible. Thank you.